Welcome back to the close, temporarily. Remember, we're looking at July 1st as our opening date here at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum at the St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth. Thank you all for joining us. Now, your mother always told you what to do with your toys. Share them with your brothers and sisters. Well, I'm going to share with you one of our toys, but you can share all of these great episodes from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum with your friends, family, relatives, and always that cranky old guy down at the corner. The more you share these videos, the more it helps the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. So as we share our stories with you, please share our stories with others that you know would appreciate a little bit of history and a great train story, which we've got for you today. Also, we have for you our ongoing promotion of a free guide to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. Read all about it before you get here by becoming a member and getting this free museum guide as our bonus offer to you. It's a $15 value. We'll pay the shipping. That's another four bucks. It's almost a $20 freebie when you join up at LSRM memberships. LSRM.org memberships become a member of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum and get this free premium offer of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum guide. And if that doesn't sound like a public television benefit pitch, nothing does. I said I'd share with you one of our toys. You know that old expression about he or she being a real workhorse? You know, they're dependable, you can count on them, they're even-tempered, they can carry the big load. That's a workhorse. Meet our workhorse. This is the Lake Spear Railroad Museum's 193, a DM&I R locomotive in the collection that is indeed our workhorse. But unlike that man or woman that you know in the office that's a workhorse, this one's always on the move. And we've had plenty of requests for people to take a close-up personal look at this. And because it's always on the move, it's been difficult. Even now, it's ready to go on its next mission. But we're going to interrupt it to tell you a little bit about it. And it all starts when the DM&IR, the Duluth Masabi and Iron Range Railway, an iron ore hauling line here in the Northland, began to dieselize. In 1953, they took a small step and purchased 15 diesel electric switch engines. They worked so well that by 1956, they were all in with 74 SD9s on the roster. And then came 1960, and they needed a little more oomph, so they got another 19 of these SD18s. And the 18 stands for 1,800 horsepower, which was 50 horsepower more than the SD9s that propagated the line at the time. And what did they do? They hauled iron ore from the mines in northeastern Minnesota to the docks in two harbors in Duluth and some miscellaneous freight on the side. But primarily, these were the iron ore haulers. And in 1960, when this one came on as the last of that 19, it was all over for steam, and dieselization started. They say it takes about 100 men or women to run one steam locomotive. By the time you service it, maintain it, and run it, you imagine the layoffs that occurred at the railroad in 1960? They called it Black Friday in Two Harbors. A downturn in the steel industry at the same time didn't help, but these diesels put a lot of people out of work. But they were much more efficient and the wave of the future. Let's go take a look inside. I think this is the first time that we've ever done an episode where the engine's actually running and ready to go and we're inside the cab. But it's all part of getting ready for that July 1st opening of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum and North Shore Scenic Railroad. Let's take a look at the engineer's side of things. One of the nice things about the DM&IR was that they took such excellent care of their locomotives. So by the time this one was donated to the Lake Spear Railroad Museum, it was still in relatively good condition, even after 38 years on the job. And that's kind of amazing. In the original picture, it had a high hood on this locomotive, but in 1992, she got a nose job. And you can see how much that improved the visibility out the front windows of the cab. And that was a safety thing. And then later on in 1998, the engine was retired, and through the efforts of Clint Ferner, who was then Vice President and Superintendent of the DM&IR, this particular engine was donated to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. Thanks to the Masabi Road Historical Society and the Lake Superior Transportation Club, along with the museum, funds were raised, the engine was sent back up to Proctor at the DM&IR shops, and it got a great paint job. And I think at the time they knew that the days of the DM&IR were numbered. It's now owned by the Canadian National Railway. I think the guys did a really good job on the body and paintwork because they knew they weren't going to do another one. This is the last DM&IR paint job on this locomotive, and we take very good care of it. But we do use it a lot, and it's one of the most popular ones on the railroad. 
So every night it gets put away, either inside the fence or inside the building for safekeeping. And that's where we're going right now. Okay, well, before we get going, let me remind you that another one of these new episodes drops every single day. You can get a free museum guide by becoming a new member, and you should share this with as many people as possible. As we share with you each and every day, what you need to do, which is cover your coughs, don't touch your face, keep a social distance, wash those hands a lot over the course of the day, and as always, let's take care of each other. Ready to go? Here we go.